So what we're going to do with this video is to calculate a portfolio beta. And um, this is quite relevant to the assignment that we have, which requires you to calculate um, or, or put together a portfolio that has a beta of 1.1, uh, 1.5. So what I will first do is um, I'm going to use publicly available data. Uh, we're going to estimate beta in a separate video, um, but for this assignment or for this um, video, we're just going to use what is uh, the betas that are publicly available. So let's look at Yahoo Finance and um, let's uh, pull up some companies. I'll start up with um, Apple. Now, since I need to put together a, a portfolio that has a beta of one and a half, uh, companies that have low betas like Apple is not going to help me out. But uh, for the time being, I'm just going to put down the betas, create myself a little list, and then we'll go through how to create a, a portfolio beta. So this one, Apple has a beta of 0 0.89. So let's write it down. So let's create our list. Uh, symbol and then it's publicly available beta. So Apple has a beta of 0 0.89. So let's see if we can find a company that has a higher beta. For instance, let's look at a company that I consider to be uh, risky, Tesla, which has a beta of 0 0.39. I don't know how that could be possible, so I'm just going to skip this one then. Um, let's look at an oil company like Exxon. Uh, this probably will have a low beta as well. Um, well, Exxon has 105, so let's write it down. Um, Exxon, 105. Now I need something a little bit more um, on the high side. So let's look at Amazon, which is a big company. I assume will have a beta. Uh, well, I, I was kind of expecting it to be low, but this will do. So Amazon has a beta of 1.74. And then uh, let's find another company. Uh, let's check it out with Facebook, which has a beta of 1.30. Let's look at um, JCPenney, which has a beta of 1.97. Now, let's also look at their chart prices. Um, so as of Sunday night, JCPenney is 85 cents. All right, so these are all Dollars. So the Facebook is one seventy seven forty seven, and then Amazon is one thousand seven hundred seventy five oh seven. Uh, Exxon is. Seventy point seventy seven. And then Apple is oops one hundred and fifty five. Oh no, you know, Yahoo Finance used to be a good website. Used to be. So Apple is One seventy five oh seven. So now what we need to do is we need to create um, a portfolio. So let's go with um, shares. And I'm just going to go randomly. Uh, let's buy, say, 10 shares of Apple. Um, let's buy 20 shares of uh, Exxon, one share of Amazon, 10 shares of Facebook, 
and say a thousand, well, 100 shares of JCPenney. So let's look at how much we invested, right? So the price times the shares, price times the number of shares, price times number of shares, price times number of shares, and price times number of shares. So in JCPenney, evidently, I invested a little bit too low. So I'll increase that to say 2000. So as you can see, I invested very similarly um, in all of the companies. So let's now take the weight. But before that, we need to have total investment. So let's review what we have done so far. Uh, I went through some random symbols, just top of my head. I looked at their betas on Yahoo Finance. Uh, and then I looked at their current prices, again, on Yahoo Finance. Um, came up with number of shares, top of my head, just out of random, uh, picked them out of thin air. And then calculated the value that I invested, how much money I paid for them. So if the stock price is 175 and there are 10 shares, that means I invested $1,750. So my total investment then would be the sum of all these investments. So I invested $8,769.72. My investment in Apple then would be what I invested in Apple divided by my total investment. So that's about 19%. Same thing with Exxon is my investment in Exxon divided by the total, uh, my investment in Amazon divided by the total, my investment in Facebook divided by the total, my investment in JCPenney divided by the total. And they're all uh, percentages. And as you can see, you know, I have about a 20% investment in all of them pretty equally weighted. So let's get our weighted beta. And this would be the beta times, or beta for the specific stock, times my investment rate for that stock in my portfolio. And I do the same for Exxon, the beta times my invested investment rate for Exxon in my portfolio, beta times its investment percentage in my portfolio, Facebook times or Facebook's beta times its investment rate in my portfolio, JCPenney times its rate in my portfolio. Now notice these are weighted betas. So let's add them up. This will be your portfolio beta. So let's add them up. That's your portfolio beta. Now notice our portfolio beta right now is 138.67. What we need to do is we need to have uh, 1.5. So what I can do is, well, first of all, the total investment is too little. We need to increase that. Um, that's easily done. Let's say that we wanted to invest about uh, $50,000. So maybe 20, 50, two, 20, you see, I just double the amount and I double it again. See, now I have $35,000. So let's keep it at $35,000 for the time being. And I need to have my portfolio beta at 1.5. You see, as I change the number of shares, um, you know, my portfolio beta did not change because I did not change the rates of individual investments within the overall portfolio. Now let's change that. In order for me to increase this, I have to increase the rate of the stocks that have higher betas. For instance, Amazon, Facebook, and JCPenney for this specific portfolio. Now, if I need to lower this, then I need to increase the rate of Apple. So since I still have another $15,000 to go for my $50,000 portfolio goal, I can now increase my Amazon holding, for instance, to say, now notice I'm going to change this to six. Notice what's going to happen to portfolio beta and what's going to happen to total investment. 
you see? Now my total investment went to $38,000 and I have a portfolio beta of 141. Let's have 10 Amazon, I'm at 45,000 and 146. Let's have 11, 12, well, that's close enough. Um, and now I have 1.48.85 um, of a portfolio beta. Now, if I wanted to make this exactly 50,000, maybe I could do 42, 45, 44, and so on and so forth. You get the idea. The idea is that the weight of our investment for each of our stock is the weight of their beta's contribution to our portfolio beta. And that is how you calculate the portfolio beta. So, thank you.